This last 14 years of drought, I thought was principally climate change. Uh, it may well be a, a cycle superimposed on climate change, um, but that's been marked. I mean, our rainfall dropped 20%. Frequent snowfalls have become rarer. Uh, heavy snowfalls have become even rarer. Stanley hasn't had bushfires for a long, long time. In the last 10 years, we've had two major bushfires, and the last one was a catastrophic day, which we've never, never run into before at all. Flash flooding we've never seen before. We had, not at Stanley, but in my father's place down at Ben Valley, Yak and Danda, you know, four inches of rain in an hour. My father's 82, he had never seen it before in his life. And I, he's always sort of said, look, you know, we have dry years and wet years. And my father and my grandfather said, you know, he remembers when the Murray River was dead stopped at Aubrey and the Murrumbidgee was stopped at Tumut and that's normal. But uh, last year, summer, I've never seen him rattle like he was rattled before. He was shaking his head. Ninety-seven point one percent of climate scientists agree climate change is happening and humans are the significant cause. Yet publicly, this consensus doesn't exist. We've seen people rejecting well-established evidence, destroying experiments in progress, whipping up fear, uncertainty and doubt, and making dangerous choices based on the conjecture of charlatans. These aren't isolated issues. And though a lot of people are extremely pro-science and, and would struggle to imagine a world without science in it. There are divides on a number of scientific issues that don't seem logical, don't stack up from the view of a scientist. That begs the question, why aren't people listening to science? Connecting all of these issues is a common thread, evidence being ignored. The economist Maynard Keynes once said, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do, sir? On all of these issues, the evidence is in. The climate is changing and humans have significantly caused it. The benefits of vaccination far outweigh the risks. Genetically modified organisms can play a critical role in feeding the planet. Yet on all of these issues, this evidence is being rejected and ignored. There is obviously something deeper happening here. Two ways of approaching evidence. We can look at this scientifically and try to understand what's influencing how we see and act in the world, basing our decisions on the evidence we see in the world or our decisions changing the evidence we see. I'm Luke Menzies. And I'm Will Grant. And this is a film about these divided scientific issues. Wearing seatbelts significantly reduces the risk of serious injury or death in car accidents. Yet many people decide to ignore the evidence and don't buckle up. Science tells us that 20% of people killed in car crashes don't wear seatbelts, showing the risk and costs of ignoring evidence. This prompted us to ask scientists why evidence is important to start with. Well, science matters because uh it will give us and provide us with evidence that we need to make good decisions. Scientific evidence is important when we're looking at the big challenges that we're facing because we need objective evidence. We need to be able to make evidence-based policy decisions when we decide what to do in response to these challenges. This is centrally important uh, for, the, for the development of contemporary society. We're running into a lot of constraints which are manifesting themselves in climate change and other types of change. Science plays a central role uh, in how we understand those problems and how we deal with those problems. We've got several centuries of, you could say, modern scientific method behind us now and we have been able to develop ways of looking at the environment, looking at questions about how the world works and we've developed very effective ways of getting some insight into that. From everyone here we're essentially hearing the same point. Science leads to better decisions through its process of evidence-based measurement. But what if we choose to ignore science? With hindsight, we know the difference between good and bad decisions. Bad decisions are the ones that lead to fewer options, greater costs, worse lives, more deaths. But in the end, the consequences of not using scientific evidence will be 
that a major part of the problem is not properly understood. And I think if we ignore what science is telling us about how our bodies work, for example, in medical science, or about how some aspects of the environment works, then we run the risk of encountering consequences which we are less well prepared for. In the end, when we're committing large amounts of money, resources, we're looking at putting people's time and energy into dealing with these challenges that face us and the decisions that we have to make, the only real evidence that we have is the scientific evidence. Seatbelts is a simple example, but issues like climate change are much more complex. So if we ignore the scientific evidence for climate change, which is really quite overwhelming now, the impacts just become greater as time goes by. So the longer we wait, the greater the impacts will be and the less prepared we're going to be to deal with them if we don't respond soon. The economic analyses that have been done show that uh, the costs of mitigating climate change, while there are some costs if we do it soon, those costs become progressively larger the longer we wait. The key question is, what sorts of knowledge and information and evidence will help us to know that beforehand? The thing about science is that it doesn't always guarantee that we're right. Within the scientific process, there's always errors and biases and the chance that we're wrong. In the 1950s, doctors routinely prescribed the drug thalidomide to pregnant mothers, unaware of the thousands of birth defects and deaths that that would cause. But the corrective of this kind of mistake is not to reject science, not to only look for evidence that confirms our beliefs, not to invent evidence that suits our worldviews, and not to reject evidence that disconfirms our beliefs, but to do more science. Science is the only system that looks to try and find out where it's wrong. If we ignore scientific evidence, then the chance of making bad decisions just goes up.